So yeah, new setup, new sort of style. I wanted to have something so it looks like you're watching like a a tech or a cybersecurity channel. And I'm trying to figure out streaming, trying to remind myself how to do all this. And it feels pretty good. We are on a new camera. We're on a new Sony a7 III. Finally, this was my Halloween present to myself. I decided that that was now a thing. I kind of had an executive decree that I want a Halloween present. So if you need like an excuse to buy yourself something, tell it, say that you're getting it for Halloween. <laughs> Over on the Twitterverse, Adam Hexacorn has been sharing gold nuggets, like absolute pure genius wizardry of some kind of neato Benito tricks with lulbins. And you know, I am I love living off the land binaries. Like, you know how I love those simple, small command line tricks. So I thought it'd be cool to play with some of these that Adam has just been sharing incessantly the past couple of weeks. I don't know if you've been tracking or if you aren't following Adam, you absolutely should. But he's been blogging and just writing kind of these small snippets of uh, some little known secrets of a couple of these binaries. And I want to play with them. <laughs> I think it'd be cool. Little known secret of Reg Server 32 is you can load multiple DLLs at the same time and not just one extra, but a whole lot of them. Because when you normally invoke Reg Server 32, you specify something else <laughs> and then a DLL. I had to process it. I had to read HH control OCX and then food. And you could just do that over and over and over again. It's going to look for this in the path, right? So that way, you don't need to supply C Windows System 32 in that case, because I think that'll be natural like DLL search locations. So does HH Control just naturally do that? But you can see in the animation, like obviously it's just going to run it over and over and over again. Like that's cutesy, but we can see if it does it because he he levels this up. He, he keeps cranking and adds a couple more tricks. So let me pull up a Windows development virtual machine and let's see if we can kind of mess with it. Because there's the, one of the very, very recent ones, the one that you released today, I think is a beautiful gold nugget and take a look on Twitter if you aren't if you aren't tracking Adam there hexacorn is his handle so all credit all credit credit order credit is due and on the conversation of OSCP I do want to do some like proving grounds I figured I might either do that for the stream or go play with this red server 32. I don't know if we need to showcase this one unless we just do it on our host which might be a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> Windows Terminal, where are you? Let me do the Windows Tasks. If folks aren't familiar, this is my absolute favorite path on Windows. See Windows Tasks because it is normally just about always world writable and world readable. It's basically like a temp folder without being a temp folder. And I might be wrong. I would love to be schooled if anyone can tell me otherwise, but I, I think see Windows Tasks is just just a place to be when you're here on Windows. Red Server 32. I'm in PowerShell. Will that run? Okay. Other monitor brought it up. So Red Server 32 is just going to display its own help information uh, when we don't pass any arguments, but that is just registering or setting up, hey, we want to trigger a DLL and run one of the DLL exports there. So DLL register server. Does HH control do that? OCX, what's the name of that? I might just be stupid because that was like, no, nah, that's not a real thing. I don't know if you staged that or not. However, we don't even really need to test that because just running it over and over and over again is all that we need. I also don't know if I like this camera view because now you can see how weird I type. I should have a DLL staged. Can anyone give me like an immediate payload? Oh, Nordgaren messaging me. Hey, I have a DLL that opens calc. We could also just write something in NIM or like a quick DLL export. But a couple of the other little secrets that he shared. And then this is the big one that I want to dive into. We'll jump over to my screen here. Little known secret of Red Server Take 2. You can auto load registered libraries associated with certain file extensions. It expects the key to be present on the file extension. And this takes a little bit of registry tweaks. So you can use regadd to uh, fuss with it. And I want to process this before I talk out loud. Setting an auto register key to be present under the file extension handler, which is normally an HK class root in the Windows registry, like for a text file, creating that and setting the value in that registry key. If you try to use red server 32 on foo.txt, it then points to your test bar.dll, which is kind of cool. Cause you can do a little bit of cheeky like misdirection. You don't even have to specify a .dll or any other normal file name for that, right? Like it looks kind of weird to use red server 32 on a text file or like a JPEG file. I'm pretty sure we need a deal. Norikara's like, crap, I broke the DLL. Chat GPT, that shizzle? <gasps> You're a genius. Chat GPT would be pretty, pretty good. Go to the VX Underground API. Give me C syntax for a DLL that will simply spawn calc.exe when 
invoking an exported function with reg server 32.exe. Hit me with it. Involves several steps. Chat GPT give me syntax. Let me steal that. Yeah, GCC on Windows, it's cursed. I agree. What is that? <laughs> Why is that in my C Windows task folder? What is that? <laughs> The length is pretty small, so I'm not super sketched, but we have a DLL, presumably. Calculator? Calculator! Ah! <laughs> this is hacking. This is pod racing. If I do this over and over again, do we spawn like a bunch of calculators? Yes. <laughs> it's over on the other, <laughs> sort of, kind of, not a ton. Nord Garrett just sent me. Okay, I just, I need to click through all of the windows that said the DLL server like actually succeeded. Does Red Server have an option to not give that pop-up? Silent, display no message boxes. Yeah, so if I just run that again with tag or slash S, we should just get a boatload of calculators, right? Yeah. This is hacking. Now the reg one would be also slick to do. And then we just have a blank text file, foo.txt, literally anything, and we can pass it that, right? Let me get out of PowerShell because I'm in that by default. Let me just get into CMD. And now reg add should be pretty A-OK. -okay. Then a text file should be able to do that, but we'll go ahead and put this in C Windows tasks and my DLL, dot DLL. How could you say that to me? You're right, you're totally right. You know, I can't fault you. You're also right. <laughs> I, I genuinely thought that I was gonna clear. And we totally should have done that in a virtual machine. I am promoting bad practice on a live stream. Now we can just echo literally anything into literally anything dot text. 32, please subscribe. Give me my deal. Hello? Please subscribe dot text may not be compatible with the version of Windows that you're running. Did I typo again? I don't think I did. No. Is it just how it was compiled? Maybe it tried to use a 32-bit? Or I don't know if I trust Norgaren. I'm looking over to see the uh, messages that you sent me. I don't know if I trust running your DLL on my host. Granted, I should be in a virtual machine. <laughs> okay, that's good to note and that it requires a different export. Auto register feature requires the library supporting this feature to export a function called DLL register server X. So our current code, if we go back to Sublime Text, we only have DLL register server. So if this were to fire, that still would not really work for us. Thank you, Chad GPT, for your wonderful sacrifice. I appreciate all of the seven calculators or whatever, five, I don't know. But the other one that I think is the coolest thing, and we need to be in a virtual machine for this, and then we should probably call it because I'm gonna have to run. John's money so long, he needs seven calculators. I appreciate that. This is incredible. And huge props to Adam. We need to do this in a virtual machine, and we'll see if that just blows up my computer from the host, even. Couple side effects about two binaries that are named the same inside of System32 and Syswap64. Red Server 32 is not different. If you're on a 32-bit Red Server 32.exe with the command line argument being a path to a 64-bit DLL, it will spawn at 64-bit twin Red Server 32 to handle the request. So gimmick, I don't know if you're tracking, if you run 32-bit Red Server 32 with another DLL that is 64-bit, it just hot swaps, switches over to use its 64-bit version of itself, of Red Server 32. For our defenders, blue teamers, the folks that do good things in the world, don't get mad. If you use Red Server 32 for one architecture and then spawn the other Red Server 32 with the other architecture, the command line argument that you started with will be passed to the following, the subsequent, the children Red Server 32. So what if you can, again, knowing the first trick, what if you pass multiple Red Server 32, all credit to Adam, all credit to Adam and Hexacorn. What if you pass multiple Red Server 32 files, load them all at once one by one, and then you keep intermixing the 32-bit and 64-bit binaries. So you have a never-ending chain reaction tree, essentially a fork bomb of Red Server 32. <laughs> That is so cool. Warning, do not try this at home. We're gonna do it live on stream in a virtual machine. Okay, and yeah, the, the slash S parameter that we saw moments ago to avoid the message box is how we would do that. Is this a thing? It's a thing. Maybe it straight up wasn't in the path earlier? Or I was just getting errors when I ran that earlier. No, did PowerShell just not like me doing that? Or was I just stupid? I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself and not doing a good job explaining what's going on, but previously we just tried to run this and that works just fine. Was it PowerShell that had the issue? Unless I'm crazy. Also awesome. In fact, like, yeah, okay. I was just insane. 
because that that just fired. You can see the message box pop again. Wow, wow, wow. Let's get out of PowerShell. Let's close that stupid message box. You're worthless. Get out of my life. I've never heard the term Dolbin, but I love it. Denial of service binaries. <laughs> so we're on a 64-bit architecture. System32 HH control should exist. Syswow64 should also exist. Correct? Yeah. And Sysnative should also exist, right? No! Or is that the point? Give something that doesn't exist. Sysnative is a directory, is it not? It doesn't matter. We're going to find out. Blow this, blow stuff up. Let's get a virtual machine in action. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, just download it from a random website. Death Lobin. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. I'm going to say it a lot, and I uh, appreciate all your support, especially kind of on a whim, random idea to live stream and hopefully get a little bit ahead of the curve when I do want to do this more, more frequently. I know we found the spot in the schedule to make it happen. So uh, we'll do more of it. Question is, if we monitor Process Explorer, can we get this to fire? Hello? Okay, you're doing your thing. Let's get an administrator terminal open. Windows Terminator is doing its thing. And this will be our finale. This will be our fireworks because I need to order pizza because it's Pizza Friday. And we have some friends coming over super soon. I hope you order pizza because it's Pizza Friday. Enough delay. Let's see this thing work. I don't know if this is literally something I can just copy and paste and I'll do it, but hit and enter in three, two, one. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh my goodness. How's that CPU doing? I mean, it's 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 Reg Server 32. It's not like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's not like it's gonna hey, it might. It might. Look at this. Can I can I horizontal scroll in Process Explorer? No, you can't. They never expected you to be able to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just think that's really, really fun. I got my infinite circle here. So question is. Can I kill all this? Do I still have time? Can I diffuse this? Oh gosh, perfect music for, for process diffusal. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, it caught them all. No, <laughs> it's never ending. That was a little fight there. I'm gonna do that again just because it was kind of funny to watch. And then it just respawns. That's hacking. What if I what if I put this in a loop? Like, can I wow one that thing? I'm in PowerShell. Well, true, that should be easy, right? Yeah, okay, and then you're, and then you're hunting, and then task kill wins. That was stupid, that was fun, that was something that we didn't have to do, but boy, did I enjoy it, and I hope you did too. Will Red Server regain its throne? No. I thought I saw some folks asking, what is Red Server? And I think, Red Server 32, we can do some Googs. We can Google it together. Let's Google, let's Google together. So let's start from the start, bring us back to where we were, in our last few moments together. This felt really good. It was really cool to stream and hang out with you guys. The Red Server 32 will invoke, spawn, register a .dll extension. One of those dynamic link libraries. That's kind of a gist. It's a native Windows binary. You often will see run dll32 just as well, but I thought this was hysterical and awesome. And a little teaser, if I may, maybe a little bit of a cliffhanger, but there was one more little write-up from Adam. Hexacorp. Credit where credit is due. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. This is all his incredible work and research, but I think it's neat. If you don't take me seriously here, fsquirt.exe. That's the name of the binary. I did not decide this. I don't make the rules. fsquirt.exe can do some pretty neat stuff. And that's a, the latest in his article, one little known secret of fsquirt. I won't, I won't scroll all the way down to tease this, but I think this would be awesome. The showcase. It'll be worth the video, if not everything else that we did in the stream. And then we will do some proving grounds and maybe some easy Linux based hacks. With that, we can start to spin this down. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. So we're going to call it everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out together. This has been cool, a uh, little goofy, a little fun, but I hope to do more of this and it'll be a lot of fun to actually get on the keyboard, do some hacks, maybe some try hack me, maybe some hack the box, maybe some proving ground, maybe some Maldiv Academy, maybe some Lord of SQL injection, maybe some web hacks, maybe anything that we want. Hopefully we'll do a little bit more. I'll catch you all later. Going to order pizza, spend some time with friends. You should too. Happy new year. I'll see you in 2024. <laughs> what if we just shrink like this? 
<laughs> Bye, everybody.